I'm Sam Kerr. I'm a principal product manager here at GitLab. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about our new streaming audit events feature that we're releasing. We're really excited about this, and we're really excited to share it with you. So let me go ahead and share my screen, and I'll provide some of the background context on what we're, what we're trying to solve here. So really, we've identified that audit events are super useful to you and running the organization you're a part of. Audit events are a great way to understand what's happening, when it's happening, and who's making changes happen. This is great for meeting regulatory requirements as well as internal compliance standards. One of the things we've heard, though, is that you'd really like to do more with these audit events. We know that you have third-party third services that you might want to integrate these audit event pieces of data into. And you've also asked, how can I take these audit events and drive automation off of them? Those are two use cases that we think streaming audit events will really be helpful for. Streaming audit events is also going to be helpful as a way for GitLab to start approaching some of those higher volume audit events that we've typically shied away from. Examples of this in the future might be things like Git commits, Git fetches, issue creation, issue deletion, and similar things. So what we're doing with streaming audit events, and I'll scroll down in our Epic a little bit, really what we're gonna be doing is allowing you to specify an endpoint that we will start sending audit events to. So this is going to be done in parallel with our current audit event system. So every time an audit event gets created in GitLab, after you've configured it, it'll be sent exactly where you want it to go. And it'll occur exactly when the audit event gets created in GitLab as well. We're really excited about this because this is what's going to allow you to drive any of that automation uh, that you'd like to go ahead and create off of these audit events, as well as ingest that data into those third party data systems. Because of how we're approaching this, this is going to be our, our minimally viable change or MVC release of this capability. And how we're doing that is through a GraphQL API set of endpoints. These GraphQL APIs are going to allow you to create new audit endpoint destinations, read what's already been configured there, update existing ones, as well as delete existing ones. So now that we've talked about it a little at a high level, I'd like to show it to you in action so you can see exactly what we're releasing and start thinking about how you might use it as part of your own projects and your own organization. So let me go ahead and I will share my screen and we will take a look at the GraphQL API and how we will interact with streaming audit events. So in this screen, what I'm showing, this is the GraphQL application. It's just a way that you can write GraphQL queries and you can see the results. So on the left side of the screen here, we've got the query we're wanting to run. And on the right side, we'll have the results. And what we're doing here, all we're saying is we want to look at this group, in this case, Sam's test group. We want to get the ID of the group. And then we want to list out the external audit event destinations. And for each one of those, we want to see what the ID number of it is, as well as the destination URL that those events are going to be sent to. And so if we run the query, we can see we currently have no audit event destinations configured, since this is the start of the demo. Uh, but we'll have this ID as the ID for the group. So if this is important, we'll have it ready to go for later. So now we've seen how we can actually look at what audit event destinations are created for a group. Let's look at how we can create a new one. And to do that, we'll use a GraphQL mutation. We'll use this external audit event destination create endpoint there. And we'll pass it a few different parameters. And these are going to be unique to this demo for my purposes. And you'll need to change these for your own purposes. So first, we'll have to provide a destination URL. And this is going to be where we want to send these events. Uh, in this case, I'm using a, a demo request bin, and we'll take a look at that in a moment. We want to use these events for the SAMS test group. So any audit events that are created inside of SAMS test group are going to be the ones that are streamed. And then we can provide a client mutation ID just for uh, knowing where this change came from. After we specify those parameters, we can add this additional set of information for our returns. So we'll take a look at if any errors get created, what happened and why those errors happened, um, as well as the information that the query created for that new external audit event destination. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Okay, great. So we can see that this query completed. 
there's no errors, so it was successful. And as we wanted, that's our destination URL, and that's the name of the group, Sam's test group, that we wanted to do this for. So now that we've gone ahead and created that audit event destination, let's go back and rerun our query just to confirm things are set up properly. And we can see that they are. So again, that's our uh, ID of the actual external audit event object inside of the GraphQL API. And this is our destination URL that we previously configured. So we won't go through them as part of this video, but we also have APIs available that let you update an existing external audit event destination object, as well as destroy an existing external audit event destination object. So now that we've gone ahead and configured everything properly, let's take a look at what a streaming audit event actually looks like in practice. All right, so now what I'm sharing, we are looking at the group members page of Sam's test group. You'll recall that this is the group that we set up our streaming audit events system for. And so let's take a look at some of the users that are a part of this group. Uh, you'll see myself, Sam Kerr, um, but you'll also see uh, another Sam Kerr. Maybe I logged into this group and added my personal account rather than my, my work account accidentally. So let's go ahead and remove this account from this group. And to do that, we'll just click remove member. Great, user is successfully removed. Now, editing group membership like that will generate audit events. So let's go ahead and just confirm that if we go to our audit events tab. And right there, that top one, you'll see that's where we just removed that user access from the group. So we know that our, our traditional classic audit event has been created. So now if we switch over to this tab, this is the uh, pipe dream request bin tab where all of those streaming audit events are going to be sent to. You'll recall this is the, the URL that we previously set up the API to send our events to. And you can see that indeed one event was created. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And you can see in here, there's going to be a number of different details, uh, which is really going to be duplicating all of that information that was in our classic audit event. So any sort of decision making we want to do in the classic audit events, we can also do in the streaming audit events. So if we click into the details of this, you can see the author name, which caused the event to happen was Sam Kerr. It was inside the Sam's test group. Uh, you can see what happened. We removed that user access from that other Sam Kerr user account. You'll note in this case, the member ID uh, and the target ID are different, even though the author name is Sam Kerr in both of these cases. There's some other information here as well. So I'd encourage you to go ahead and take a look at our full documentation to really understand everything that we're sending that you might be able to drive automation or decisions on. But this was the quick demo of our new streaming audit events. As you can see, it was really easy to get started. It was really easy to add those GraphQL calls to configure and set up the streaming audit event system. And once configured, we very easily get all of these different events as they come exactly at the same time as they come. And so again, this is our MVC. We're excited to do a lot more in this area. And I would encourage you to look at the Epic and the issues that are associated with this. And we'd love to hear your thoughts, hear your feedback, and hear what you're planning on using streaming audit events for. Thanks so much. Have a good day.